Alle in den Monat. And Korean Chiefs. Um, Korean Chief Comology. So last time um, we introduced the functor Rm, which took a graded module to a complex of E modules. And uh, one of the things uh, which we proved that the cohomology of these complexes is a um, uh, um, complex of graded E module. We can take the ice, ice cohomology in degree j. That that was equal to tor um, over uh, j minus i of s of m with radius in k in degree j. So, so if m is a module which is generated in the, um, has only terms a degree um, greater or equal to zero. Then Rm is acyclic. By definition, um, this is equivalent that H i of R m is zero for i greater than zero, and that is equivalent to. So this formula holds for every j. For example. Um, and i greater than zero, so the index j minus i is uh, smaller than the index j. So I could also write this condition as tor k s m field k in degree i plus k is equal to zero for all i greater than um, greater equal to one. Right. Now, since m is uh, generated in m zero, this is equivalent that uh, m greater equal to zero has a linear resolution. Right. The higher torques all vanish. Um, we have no de uh, um, terms in degree, negative degree, so it really is a linear resolution. Moreover, if P denotes the kernel of um, the map um, home of a KE M0 going to um, Mm. Home K E M one. This is now going to be a graded module. We have that P zero is going to be B tar zero um, K M in degree zero, and P one is going to be for one of k in degree one and so on. So, so thus L of p, which is a complex which start out with s tensor p zero, s tensor p one and so on. has the same terms as the terms as the minimal free resolution of n.
right, that P1 is this tau group, and that's what we have in the linear resolution of this module M, which is M greatly equal to zero perception. So what I would like to prove next is, is a proposition L of P is a linear resolution of M greater to zero. Um, in this situation, if M if Rm is a cyclic. To see this, we have to identify the differential in this complex. We have to identify this dif differential in the complex. So what we should do, um, we consider, I take the functor R of this L of P. This is a double complex. So, uh, um, but no, I want to do a different, I want to do, um, sorry, L of R of M, this way. So, uh, we get S tensor home of uh, uh, of k into m zero, then s tensor hom. Excuse me, what what's the, the LP there? LP LP has the same what? It's a linear resolution of m greater equal to z no, no, over over LP has the FP as tensor p one. the same terms. Terms has the same terms. I'm sorry, yes. Right. So this is uh, um, from V to M0 and so on. So and then uh, here we have um, so this is sort of um, this complex here is a complex L of um, RM zero, right? So RM zero, right? Which is one of the terms, and it's going to be just the causal complex tensorized with k, right? This here is the same as s tensor k, s tensor w. The next term would be s tensor lambda two w, right? That would be the same complex tensorized with m zero. Right? But this is only one piece of the double complex. The next one is with M1. So we have here S tensor hom K M1 in a differential in that direction. And then correspondingly here S tensor hom V M1 and so on. So I'm going to raise this again uh, because it does belong to the complex. So this is this double complex 
which we are considering. So the horizontal homology This sort of homology is um, um, is a homology is a homology of the causal complex. tensorized tensor over k with m d so the d strand so the homology here is m0 here it's m1 here it's m2 here so on the diagonal right the vertical homology So the kernel in this direction is the complex L of P. So L of P will have that term in the kernel, and then here the kernel of this map, and so on. So here we will have L of P. So comparing um, the um, so the total cohomology of the complex sits in total degree zero. It sits here on the diagonal. So LP resolves the module. Diagram over the MD, D grad equal to zero. And the only thing which remains to be proven is, and the only thing we have to check is that this module has the same module structure that the module structure so the maps from W tensor MD MD plus 1 coincides with the original structure module structure So let's see what kind of terms we have. So we have, for example, home um, KMD. And we want to multiply with W, tensor W, right? So this <laughs> So this of course is W tensor M D. But this is isomorphic under the differential to what is, what is W? W is um, I'm uh, S is sim of W. And E was lambda of V, V is W dual. Right? Sorry. Um, so this, uh, and the differential 
of the complex comes from um, S0, which is sort of, so this is S1, right? So this comes from S0. So this is um, S0 tensor hom V into MD, right? That's a differential in this direction. And that, of course, is an isomorphism because W is equal uh, to V2. Right, so this is an isomorphism. And here we go into um, S0 tensor um, hom k in MD plus 1. This is a vertical map. So, which of course, this one is MD plus 1. And this here really is W tensor MD. So, taking this, um, so the, the multiplication is gotten by um, inverting the one of the direction with an isomorphism, then going upwards. And of course, this map here is the same tensor. It's the same tensor. Because we just flipped tensors. Okay? So really, this uh, uh, L of P. So, L of P resolves M greater or equal to R. And is you. Yes, uh, a resolution. One can generalize the above argument to argument above. To the theorem, which is due to Bernstein, Gelfand, Gelfand which is a very small contribution as Eisenbach, Fleuchstadt, and myself. Um, R, this functor R and L, extend to a pair of functors from complexes over S to complexes over E. Here's R and there's L. A pair of and now a joint punctus. So if we have we know what we have to do if we have a single module, we get a complex. If we have a complex of module, we get a double complex. We take the simple as uh, a total complex of the double complex that defines R in L. We do the same thing. Joint functors in the sense that, I, that is, if we have a complex, um, if we have a complex P dot, and we uh, look at R of M dot. So these are uh, uh, both complexes over E. Then HOM E of P dot into R M dot is the same as HOM of complexes S of L of P dot. into M dot.
more of them by junction we get maps we get a map from P dot into uh, R of L of P dot on L of P dot and then we apply R right so by a junction we get a map I claim this is map is an inclusion of um, uh, vector space vector spaces and um, and subjection from L of R of um, M dot to M dot. Uh, injective respectively projective resolutions Second equality is equal as a set, or uh, uh, th this year? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, as a set, if you want, yes. It's k vector spaces. If you want, both are still k vector spaces, oh. right? So, the, right. And it's basically the same argument. It's uh, not harder than the diagonal uh, argument here. It just gets sort of more messy. I don't think there's more into it. So somehow Bernstein, Gelfand, Gelfand avoid to speak about adjoint functors. They just had these functors, but they had, didn't have the adjointness and notices. And of course, it's very nice to have adjointness because you get this map for free from the identity. The identity from LP to LP gives uh, something. Um, uh, homomorphs of P to L of R of P, right? In my space. However, these complexes are highly nominal. What is so R of M is uh, always never finite complexes with infinite complexes apply L of that. This will be certainly infinite um, if I have a single module. Um, yeah, uh, we we have an infinite object which resolves it, which is uh, of course uh, not so nice. But then nevertheless, uh, that sort of the right framework and <coughs> yeah. So I'm not not going to prove this. Non, non minimal. Sorry, I should say more. So actually this paper of Bernstein, Gelfand, Gelfand and also the accompanying paper of Bylinson both are a write-up of a talk of Mani and they look very different and uh, maybe in Mani's talk uh, all of this has been, all of we have done has been in but Mani is a nice guy here. David at some point talked to him and he didn't point it out that this was known in Russia for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it might very well be. So what did Bylinson uh, say in this connection? Bylinson proved a different kind of theorem. And uh, as an additional reference, I would point to the book of Heubrechts on derived uh, um, 
uh, derived geometry, Heubris uh, in 2006, and I'm referring explicitly to the definition uh, 8.31 in this theorem. So what he says, let u inside w times the OPN O1 denotes the universal that's why it's called U rank in subbundle on PN. The exterior powers of u, lambda z of u, which of course is O, lambda 1 of u, which is u, lambda 2 of u, up to lambda n of u, is uh, this uh, collection, is a full, strongly exceptional series. It's a full, strongly exceptional. series for the derived category of bounded complexes bounded Korean chiefs on PN which is right orthogonal to the strongly exceptional sequence um, O of A uh, A is between 0 and N So what this says in particular is the derived category is generated by either these objects or by, by the line bundles from zero in twist zero up to n. And um, so exceptional means that these have uh, no, um, have only the homotopies as derived endomorphisms. So the x, higher x is zero. And also the high, higher extensions only as, as the homomorphism goes this way. And uh, uh, there are no extensions sort of um, going the other way, so there's uh, so there's no homomorphism or x in this direction. Uh, same as here. So, in what means right orthogonal? In the sense that. Well, we uh, have OC, and we have one of these exterior powers, and we can look at home of this. And as you do in the derived category, you look at the derived home, R home, which is now a complex, and then uh, we can look at some homology, HP of this is going to be HP of lambda a u twisted by minus c and this is going to be a copy of k if a is equal to c is equal to p and z u otherwise. So this, uh, well, u of course can also be written as omega p, um, one of one if you want differential forms. 
and the cohomology is vanishing. So then we have sort of as a statement is sort of that h q of omega p is going to be uh, one if q is equal to p and zero otherwise. This is sort of the mm, well-known vanishing result, uh, which you know. So. Um, I'm sure you all know that uh, how to compute the cohomology of the omega piece. So this somehow looks like it relates to Hodge theory. Well, this part does relate to Hodge theory, but I think really uh, uh, we have changed. First we called them omega, but now we call them u for a good reason because I think the universal subbundle property is a property which really makes it go. Anyhow, so. So what does this theorem says? Well, so one thing it called Larry. Any object in DB PN can be represented. by bounded <laughs> complex B B with well, B D is a direct sum over A's B, D, A, so these are vector spaces in degree zero. Finite dimensional vector spaces in degree zero tensor over K with lambda A U. We can build any objects in the derived category as a complex using only those terms. How many we have to use in the disposition of the complex? Well, this is given by the dimension of BDA. All right. Now, um, uh, remember that HOM of lambda AU to lambda BU is isomorphic to E in degree um, uh, B minus A, so this is lambda A minus B V, I believe. Is this correct? Now I got it wrong. Um, from A to B is A minus B. Um, this is A minus B and then it's lambda B minus A. Uh, degree of the elements of V were in degree minus one, so this makes sense. And how does this um, uh, map go? Well, we have uh, lambda AU sitting inside lambda AW tensor O. Here we can contract with an element E to get to lambda BW tensor O, and this induces a map here lambda BU. Right? Here's these diagrams. particular there exist such a complex B for any Korean chief B for any Korean chief so we have the H star 
of this complex B is going to be H0 of B, which is going to be F. Right? So this complex B is what people call a binance monad for the chief F. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Bidenson didn't tell you how to find this complex. And uh, um <coughs> I'm going to explain how we really will find this complex explicitly once we have the sheaf explicitly. So the early uses of these bindings and complexes was that we should guess one of these complexes. For example, there were sort of on P4. We had uh, a complex which had sort of two copies um, of lambda 2u, five copies um, of O, and another five copies of O minus 1, which is lambda 4 of u. In here, a matrix, and I write down this matrix. So this is P4. So we have a dual basis V as a basis E0, E4. And then uh, the matrix is a rather particular kind. It's E1 wedge E4, E2 wedge E3. And now I'm going to cyclically permute the indices. So in the next column there will be E2 wedge E0, um, E3 wedge E4, E3 wedge E1, E4 wedge E0, E4 wedge E0, E, e um, what was this? Uh, this is not right. Right here is four wedge e two. Is this correct? So two, three, four, e two. Zero and two, yes. And then here I had have e zero wedge e one. And the last term is down here it's e one wedge two. And up here it's um e zero wedge e three. So in the columns, there are de uh, st uh, st decomposable vectors. Here in the first column, there are the ones which do not involve E0. This one doesn't involve E1, and so on. The difference between these indices sort of in the pentagon is um, 2 or 1, right? So, so we take this and this, and then we start rotating. So this is a was one of the monad uh, given, so was con um, proof. And then the theorem of um, um, Horrocks Mumford H0 of this uh, B, this is of the Horrocks Mumford mon mon monad, B Horrocks Mumford. Um, H star of E of Morse not this is H zero of uh, um, B of Horx Mumford E C Horx Mumford bundle F Horx Mumford bundle this is a rank two vector bundle on P four so that was a typical application of um, of these concepts. Of course, you don't really need the theorem for that. You just have to write down this complex, and then you have to prove that it really is a vector bundle, which might be uh, complicated or not so complicated. <coughs> so back to this here. Um, we had here the differential the differential um, in differential in this uh, complex is given by matrices of size dimension this with entries in the exterior algebra we call such complex minimal 
if z matrices and with entries in and the exterior algebra in E which are non-zero if we have non-zero entries only for, uh, um, for uh, entries in negative degree only in E less than zero. So if we, there are no constant entries. If I would have a constant entries, I would have sort of here locally an isomorphism which I can split and make it a smaller complex, which then uh, would still have the same homology. So we have a notion of minimal in terms of the exterior algebra. It's the usual notation. The <coughs> entries of the matrix C's are in the maximal ideal. Then we have the following theorem, which uh, must be due to Bynison. Or is due to Bynison. Let B be in minimal. Bailinson monad, Bailinson monad for a career in chief F with terms as before. I denote them BD is a direct sum over A's BD. A times over K lambda A U. <coughs> then this vector space B D A is isomorphic to H D plus A of F twisted by minus A. So the, we can identify if it's a monad of a sheaf, we can identify the cohomology, uh, these vector spaces with cohomology groups. Since B and F are quasi isomorphic, we can compute. R home of O C into F using R home O C into B. The first is the complex the complex of vector spaces. I mean, our home is just A T U of F minus C, and um, this is the derived, so, um, so it's going to be the complex, the complex zero, H zero of F minus C going to H one F minus C going to H N F minus C zero with zero differential. <laughs> it's 
Martin II. Gives, well, <coughs> only the term where A is equal to C survives, so it gives the term B, D, C, um, going to B, D, plus 1, C, and so on. with um, also with zero differential. Since B was minimal. With B, C, um, B, D, C sitting in homological degree um, d plus c because we had that um, because our home to be k um, um, if, if and only if a is equal to c is equal to p. So we get an extra shift by c. And now we just compare. So so b d BD in C is equal to H um, D plus C of F in twist minus uh, C. Must be the right position. Which I think is the one which I wrote down except for A has gotten to be C. Maybe I'll do one corollary and then we make it. Uh, I'm supposed to make a break at some point, yes. right? So the corollary first. Corollary. Um, the balance and monad from of a chief. Terms. Well, we can have a term in degree minus n going to up to b0 going all the way up to bn. Because cohomology is only in the range from 0 to n, and uh, in this sum we can let, uh, so if you would, for example, in terms minus n. Then we can two take here and, and plus n, then here, so the last term will be sort of dominant by h is a zero of f minus c, uh, f minus n. So this here will be sort of, um, yeah, because um, proof zero is less than m. Um, P is less than equal to n, that for the cohomology in 0 is less than equal to c, uh, less than equal to um, n in, in this formula. So it only has sort of a, a bounded range.
So in this example, H2 of F of minus 2 is going to be C2. It's two, two dimensional. That's sort of what we read of here. And this is an H1 group, and this is an H3 group of the corresponding sheaf. We'll see this more clearly later on. That's what we get out of this. So I guess um, H1 of F, um, I, I don't do the numbering, I, I'm too dangerous to get the numbers wrong. <laughs> All right, so I think the show forms will be...